Okay, so we had this one uh, last time. So we got this relation here, Tm equals negative Kb Kt over Ra omega M Kt over Ra Ea. That's what we got. Didn't we? Oh, no, not here. So we got up to here. Yeah, sorry. We got up here. So we have to evaluate the constant now, okay? So K and alpha. Yeah. So evaluation of K and alpha is uh, the thing we need to do today. So we have ZM. Okay, let me. Ooh, how do I bring this over? So keep it for now. No, this got it. Let me bring it over there. So this guy, we got up to this, right? We got up to this. We got up to this, okay? And also we figured this out, right? We found JM and DM, right? So JM is this, DM is this. So what else we need to do here? So JM is done. So JM is done, DM is done, right? So now our goal is to figure out um, KT, this JM also done. So KT and KB. Okay, we need to figure this out now, KB and KT. Once we figure this out, then, so then we just plug in here and done, right? So that's the, that's the thing. So, so to figure out K and alpha, which is, you know, this is in the form of uh, theta M over theta EA equals uh, K over S, S plus alpha, okay? So this is alpha on the top, this guy is uh, K, sorry, this is, uh, K on the top and you have alpha here on the bottom, right? This guy is alpha. Okay, so now we need to figure out KT and KB. So to figure out KT and KB, so which are electrical constant, right? KT and KB, they are electrical constant. So we, get, we can do the testing of the motor, okay? So suppose you are given a motor, right? This is a motor you are given to you. Then you can do the test. So those tests are called there are two kinds of test, tests. One is stall test, the other one is no load test, okay? So you have to do two tests to figure out this KT and KV, okay? So these two tests gives you KT and KB. So we use a device called dynamometer, okay? So the device that you use for testing this no load and stall test is called dynamometer, okay? So what actually this dynamometer does is, this does not give me direct KT. So how does it calculate uh, KT and uh, KB? That's what I'm trying to show you, okay? So how, what is the working principle of dynamometer? So what it does is, it, it just does not give you KT and KB right away, right? So it does some kind of calculation inside. So what does it do is, it does the, torque and speed calculation. So like this, how does the torque, uh, this is your speed theta, this is your torque. So how does the torque vary with uh, theta? Okay, so under the condition of applied, constant applied volt. Suppose you apply the constant volt of let's say Ea equals, uh, what do I call it? Let's say Ea1, how about that? Okay. So, so if, if EA equals EA1, then you can do EA equals EA2. So, so this is constant, I don't know, this is two volt, this is, I don't know, three volt, I don't know, right? This is constant. So for particular constant voltage, you get tau and theta, okay? Then you can draw the plot, right? You can draw the plot here. So dynamometer measures the torque versus speed uh, of the motor under the condition of constant applied volt. Then, then after that, what does, what does dynamometer does is it uh, rely on this equation. Remember with this, we already had this. We did this before. Okay, this is not new to us. This is what we have already done in the last lecture. So I can simplify this guy. I can simplify this guy a little bit, okay? 
So this LA is much, much, much smaller than RA. Okay? So that's why I can simply ignore this guy. So this is zero. When this is zero, what do I get? You get RA over KT. RA TM divided by KT. RA TM divided by KT. That's what I got. Then KB this here. No change. This is here. No change. So what happens? What happens if you take the inverse Laplace transform of this guy? Help me here. So R A is constant, K T is constant, right? So what is the inverse Laplace transform of T M? S inverse now. It's not the regular transform. It's the inverse transform. So S becomes T, right? So that's what we have here. So this S becomes T R A over K T T M T R A over K T T M T. That's what we have. From here, you get this Laplace transform. And from here, so KB is KB, right? What is this S theta? S theta is S D theta over DT, inverse, right? So then you have uh, simply D theta over, oops, why do I say S? So S, D, S theta M is D theta over DT, which is omega, right? So that's what I have here. Omega t. Then what is the Laplace transform of big E A? A little E A T now. So far so good. So what do I get if I solve for a T M? Help me here. If I solve this guy for T M, what do I get? Do you see that? I get this one here. Does it make sense? Okay, so you just uh, multiply uh, multiply both sides by KT over RA, right? KT over RA, KT over RA. So this guy, RA, RA cancel out, this cancel out, so you add, you add to TM. Then, so this goes to the right-hand side, so negative, right? Negative, uh, KB, KT, omega. K B K T omega divided by R A, right? That's what that's it. Then you have on the right hand side E A K T over R A. E A K T over R A. Does it make sense? Now, so what is this guy? So it is a straight line. If T M is uh, Y, right? And uh, um, omega is a uh, uh, angular speed, right? So then you have angular speed omega and our theta dot, whatever you call it, or omega, then is the tau, okay? So then what is the, what is this guy here? What is this one? So can you help me, how does the, this is your x, right? This is your m, this is your b, right? So this is y equals mx plus b. So what is your M? M is, slope is, slope is negative KB, KT over RA. That's your slope. RA, right? That's your slope. So, so how does, the, how does this uh, straight line, this is the equation of straight line, Y equals MX plus B. What is the equation, line, equation of this straight line? Negative slope, right? So this is how it looks like. Does it make sense? Okay, so you have the, you see the, uh, this is the equation of a straight line. So for different, for different uh, EA, okay? All right, so it is a straight line uh, a TM versus omega M. Now, so to, now our goal is to figure out KB and KT, right? That's our goal. To do that now, what we do is we we set omega is equal to zero. So what is what happens whenever whenever omega equals zero? You get what? T m equals k t r a times e a, right? So when omega equals zero, omega equals zero. 
your TM is this. Okay. All right. So now when you do the install test, then you get, you can find this TM. You can find this TM. Then I can, I can call it T install test equals KT over RA times EA. From here, can you figure out, uh, okay, so this is equation number one. So now, when TM equals zero, on the other hand, so let me call this equation one. This is exactly the same thing here, right? This guy is exactly the same thing, this is equation one. So when, next thing what I, I will do is, I say TM equals zero. When I say TM equals zero, what do I get from here? Help me here. TM equals zero, you get negative KB KT over RA omega M plus KT over RA EA, right? So I can equate this together. This is equal to zero, right? Then if I equate this together, then what do I do? You just do here and put an equal sign here, right? Take it to the other side. Then, so divide both sides by KT. They cancel out, right? So divide both sides by KT. KT, KT cancel out. Okay. So, Is there any, anything else can sit out? K, RA, RA cancel out. So what is your omega M here? EA over? EA over, help me? KB, right? So that omega is called no load omega. No load meaning? No torque, right? So no torque omega. Now, what does what does your uh, your, your uh, dynamometer gives you? No load. This is how it calculates. Okay, I'm just trying to show you how this calculates this all those things. Okay, so this is how it calculates the T stall and omega no load. T stall and omega no load. Then once you know this two from your dynamometer, right? Then can you figure out KT and uh, KT and RA? Sorry, KT and KB. So from so how do you get that? Uh, from here, what is your uh, KT over RA? KT over RA is T stall over EA. So what is your KT then? KT is T stall over EA times RA. So you know RA, right? It's the constant, right? So T is tall, you get it from dynamometer. EA, it is constant, you know it. So then you can figure out KT, done. Similarly, from here, how do you figure out KB? KB equals EA over omega, no load. So from here, what do you get? you get KV. So you got KV here, you got KT here, then you just plug in everything there and you get uh, K and alpha, okay? You get this K and this alpha, everything. Question here. You have to understand this, otherwise you cannot do the homework problem. So where is the alpha? Is it the R alpha? Um, no. So to alpha is this guy here. Alpha is this whole thing. Oh, sorry. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, this is alpha. So you can find alpha now, right? You know JM, you know DM, now you know KT and KB. But the RA is constant, so just plug in and you get the answer. 
All right, sir. Thank you. So will the homework um, basically say something like, oh, the results of a torque stall test give a value of whatever, and that we'd plug in to find those constants? Okay, the homework will like, look like this. So you'll have the, so I'll give you the curve. Let's say, look at the, do you have the book here? Uh, uh, example two third 23. Example, example, do you have your book handy? Example 223, or I can show you here. I must have the book over here. Why can't I type in numlock? Oops. I'm just randomly guessing this. There. So your homework problem will look like this. Okay, so it'll give a little drawing of the graph. Yeah, you'll be given the draw a graph. So from here, so, okay, let me, so you can, you can find your, uh, so JM, so JM is a uh, formula is this, right, for JM. So you have J given, look at this, J given. It's very similar to this problem, okay, the homework. So J equals five, right? And the JL, JL is where is JL? Let me use my uh, pen here. Can I use my pen? Is there? Uh, is there any drawing feature here? Are you getting aware of it? P line sign. Yeah, you can draw with that. I can? Yeah. Where is it back there? Yeah, it just... Oh, no. Uh... I don't know. It, does, it just wants me to type the uh, thing. Yeah, it's asking me to type that on that. Yeah. All right, so whatever. So. I can show with my mouse, right? Now it's getting bigger, that's nice. Oops. Where did it go? So you are given, you will be given, uh, you are given J, A, D, A, D, L, J, L, right? And you are given N1 and N2. So you can figure out J, M, and J, M, and J, A, D, M, right? That should be easy, like this. Just plug in, right? Then next thing is you have to find the KT and KV, right? So to find KT and KV, you know your T stall, T stall and uh, no load. How do I know? How how do I know this thing? Uh, this a T stall and uh, uh, no load. Let me show you here. T stall. T stall is how do you find the T stall? What is the process of finding T stall? Angular velocity is zero, right? Remember? To find T stall, what did you do? Angular velocity is zero. So where is angular velocity is zero here? This is angular velocity is zero, right? So when angular velocity is zero, what is your uh, torque? 500, that's T stall. Then how did you find uh, omega or no work? No load. When T, T equals zero, right? Meaning, when is this t equals zero? Right here, which is 50. So this is omega no load. This is t stall. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So, 
So once you are given that two, right, you are given T stall and um, omega no load, then you can figure out your, so T stall is given 500, no load is 50, then your EA is given in this problem. I don't know, let me double check. Is EA given? Yeah, EA is given 100, okay? So E is given, then you just plug in. So then you can find KT, KV, then you, you figure out your, yeah, that's it. Then you might have to find the theta L over EA. You simply do uh, this relationship to relate these guys, theta M and theta L. How do I relate theta M to, to theta L? Use this simple relation. Yeah, if you go through this problem, you know, example, it should be easy for you to do homework problem. Okay, if you have uh, any problem, just uh, shoot me an email, so I'll be able to help you. Okay. Guys, any other question, please? I want to make sure you guys get it. Any comment? No comment? Right. So I assume that you guys get it in that case. Okay. So now this is the last one of this uh, chapter. 2.11 linearization. So remember so far what we did is uh, we talked about linear system, right? We didn't do anything else. Just we found the transfer function of linear system. But in practice, there are lots of non-linear system in, in, uh, uh, in real life. Okay? So how do you, how do, how do you um, deal with those kind of systems? Okay, so in that case, we have to convert this, uh, this system to linear system. So the process is called linearization, okay? That process is called linearization. So if the, if the system is not linear, you cannot find the transfer function, right? So that's why you have to somehow be able to linearize the system. So suppose you have uh, this guy, right? You have a, uh, is, this, is this linear or non-linear? Guys, help me here. Is this linear or non-linear? Linear. This is linear, right? This is a, uh, the straight line is obviously linear, right? Okay, now if I have the other one, let's say, So if you have the other one, let's say this, right? If you have the other one, let's say this. So it is linear or non-linear? Can anybody help me please? That one would be non-linear. Why do you think so? It has a curve to it. Yes, it has a curve and uh, what does it look like? It looks like, um, like, but, or something like uh, something nonlinear. So I would say this one is uh, about. Can I call this something like a parabola? Maybe, right? We can guess, right? Okay. So this looks like uh, this is not. This is not nonlinear, definitely. So if you have to deal with this kind of system, can you use the? Can you apply that? Uh, the rule that we learned so far, you know, figure out transfer function and stuff like that. No, right? 
with the transfer function can be just used for linear system. So if you have, let's say you have this kind of system. Now, I, then you came up with the idea, okay, this guy is nonlinear, right? Then suddenly you realize, okay, this guy, then you suddenly realize that, okay, this guy is very helpful. And you, you think, okay, I wish this guy was linear, right? Suppose this point, right at this point, you want to work with this guy now. I wish this guy was linear at this point, around this point. This is your working area, okay? So this area is interesting to you. This particular area is interesting to you. Then you are wishing that this, this thing around this point was linear. Okay, so now how do you linearize this thing? So when I say this thing, you want to linearize around this point here. Because you, you don't want to linearize everything, right? Because it is already nonlinear. You cannot linearize everything. You can just linearize around some point. You have some point, let's say this point, right? And that point is interesting to you. So around this point, you can linearize the system. Maybe if you take a small portion of this, it looks like linear, right? How do you, so, okay, this is linear now. From here to here, it looks like linear. Good news. But uh, how do you find the formula now? Okay, this form, what is the, so this is, does this represent y equals x or y equals 2x? Or what is the formula? If it is linear, it has to be in this form, right? Because, because uh, linear is y equals mx, right? mx plus b. If this thing is linear, how can you represent this linear part? in this form, that is called linearization. The trick we use to do that, the process rather, is called linearization around that point. That point is called, help me here, that point is called operating point. Guys, so far so good? Yeah. Okay, now to linearize, okay, now we, we, we agree that we have to linearize. And uh, you know what, it, what it, look, it might look like, right? When you linearize it, it looks like this uh, black thing here, okay? So we know that, but you need to find the analytical equation for that. Find the analytical equation for that part. For that, we have to perform the Taylor series expansion. Calculus two. I'll take you guys back to calculus two now. So what does the Taylor series look like? I know this looks familiar to you. There is no doubt about it. So if the function is fx, then this can be expanded as so f x zero, because your your point is let's say I don't know what is your point here let's say. Let's say your point is two. Okay, x equals two. You want to linearize this guy about x equals two, so your x zero is two. Okay, so your f x is your f x is. Your f x is x squared, right? Because we, we assume that this curve is x squared, y equals x squared, which is fx, right? So fx is equal to x squared. Then what is your df over dx? Help me here. 2x. But that has to be evaluated at x, x equals 0. So x equals x0. So which gives you 2x0. Then what is your fx0 here? fx0 is? x zero is square. Now what is this guy? What is this guy? Two x zero. Then what is this guy? X minus two. Oh, x minus x zero. Let's put it x minus x zero, right? 
for now. So I'll put that x0 uh, equals 2 at, you know, finally. x minus x0 for now. So what, how do you simplify this? This is the, so remember, we just take these two terms because we want to linearize it. You, you ignore. What is that? Higher order term. Okay, ignore the higher order term. So ignore hot. So here, x z squared plus, help me here, two x zero x minus two x z squared. So how do you simplify it? Hmm? 2x0 x minus 0x squared, right? So what is your df over dx calculated at? Looks like you guys are lost here. Help me please. I'm bored. Sorry, where did you get um, the minus 2x0 squared? I thought you said ignore higher order terms. Yeah. Okay, so my, okay, let me redo it. You, you said this this guy, what do I get this from? Yeah. So do you understand this? Yeah, I understand that part. Okay, then you just simplify it. X zero is square, then you just, you know, distribute it. So two X zero X. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Minus two X zero is square, right? <laughs> okay, then, uh, then two X zero X, then you have, uh, Minus two plus one, right? Here is one, so we give you it gives you this. Now, what I'm asking here is remember you found this guy right here. Where did you calculate this guy? X equals where? Two, right? You found this as x equals two. Okay, it means this is the function that you linearized at x equals two. Okay, does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, now, good. So let me let me do this here. Let me erase everything, and uh, I'll keep this one, and I'll erase everything. I'll erase everything else except this one, because I know linearized version of my. So I know linearized version of. Uh, uh, my fx. So my previous fx is, x square. My linearized version is, I call it approximately, because this is the approximation, right? 2x0, x minus x0 x squared. What did I linearize this? At x equals two, right? This is linearized about x equals two. So at x equals two, what did this guy give you? Help me here. What does this guy give you at x equals two? Fx equals four, right? So what does this guy give you at x equals two? Two times because x zero is two, x equals two minus x zero is Two e squared. What do you get? 
8 minus 4, you get exactly 4. Your fx also approximated as 4. Look at that. So when you linearize something about some point, at that point, it exactly represents the function. But how about x equals 3 now? Let's say. So at x equals 3, what is your fx? So at x equals 3, what, is your, what does this guy give you? So your x zero is two, you know, right? X zero is two. This is two, right? Now your x is three now. So two times two times three minus two square. What do you get? Help me here. Twelve minus four is eight. You are supposed to get eight. Sorry, nine. But you got eight. So, what I'm trying to say is this. When you linearize, let me make it a little clean here. So, when you linearize this guy, at x equals 2, this is your x equals 2, then this function looks like this. This is your linearized function. This is your fx equals x square. And this guy is, this guy is what? Help me. Two, actually you can write two times two times x minus two square which is 4x minus 4. This is your 4x minus 4. Okay, let me simply erase this and write 4x minus 4. This is fx equals 4x minus 4. See? You linearize at x equals 2, right? This is your x equals 2. x equals 2. At x equals 2, they exactly match each other. See, they exactly match each other. It actually equals two, you get four and four. You get here four, you get here four. They exactly match each other. Oh, this is this oh is this the one I'm talking about? Yeah, so yeah. So it actually equals two, they exactly match each other. But when you talk about x equals three, maybe here. X equals three. Instead of getting nine you get eight. Is this is still okay with you? Does it make too much difference to you? If the answer is yes, then string the reason, okay? You don't want to work that far. If that's too much different, it doesn't give you right answer, then string the reason a little bit. And maybe you start working uh, around 0 0.5. Instead of working, instead of going up to three, you start working up to 2.5, not 3. Then here 1.5. So your working region will be now 1.5 to 2.5 instead of 1 to 3. You have to decide yourself what is your working region. Is this too much different? Then shrink down your region of you know working area. Guys, does it make sense? Guys, comment, question. Please. It's good to me, I understand. Okay, nice. 
So now you want to do some more example. Let's do some uh, little different function, right? This is a very easy, basic function, right? Let's talk about something different. So how do you linearize different function then, okay? So let's do this, uh, this function. Let's linearize this function here. So you have to linearize this fx equals three sine x about x zero equals pi. So somehow you came to know that your function three sine x, how does it look like? Your sine x looks like this, right? Okay, this is your, this function is three sine x. So this function, you realize that this guy could be useful to you around x equals pi. So around this region, you realize that, okay, this guy might be useful to me around this region. So you don't have to worry about everything else. Now linearize that region. You have to linearize this region about pi. How do you linearize about pi? So use the, use the again Taylor theorem, right? Fx equals Taylor's expansion. So your fx equals fx zero, where x zero is pi. Then the derivative of f at calculated at x equals x zero, in our case pi, x zero is pi. Then x minus pi, this is pi. That is your uh, thing, right? Okay. So we'll put that pi there later on, for, but, for, but for now, so let's keep uh, working on it. So what is your df over dx? First of all, you need to figure this out, right? So what is your df over dx? Uh, derivative of function x with respect to uh, x. Function f with respect to x. So three sine becomes three cosine, but that has to be evaluated at x equals five. So what did this guy give you? Three cosine pi is negative one, right? So negative three. That's why, so this guy is negative three here. Then what is your fx zero? fx zero is three sine x zero. So x zero is pi, right? See sine pi is zero, this guy is zero. Then how about this guy here? You got x minus x zero. So we had negative three, x minus x zero. Does it make sense? Now, so you can represent this function, see this sine function? You can represent this sine function by this straight line. Is it not a straight line? This is y equals mx, right? Three x zero, oops, ax, right? Negative three is the uh, slope. Then you have the b, b is three x zero. This is your b, this is your m. So you have the slope of negative three. So that's why your equation looks like this now. Maybe negative slope, right? You know what negative means? Like this, right? So that's why I have it here like this, see? You see this red part? I'm trying to I'm trying to make this one. Okay, so bigger this number, suppose this number was big, let's say 10, then your slope will be like this, very steep slope like this. Oops, the slope will be like this, steep. This is steep, right? That will be steep, steeper than the previous one. So depending on the, 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 this thing here, right? This thing, this is the amplitude, right? Like this, right? Then you'll get the steeper slope there. So this is how you linearize your function at uh, x equals pi for this guy. Okay, let's do one more problem with the, uh, one more linearization before I move to the uh, real uh, transfer function, okay? So, now how do you linearize this differential equation? This is the differential equation. 
I want to linearize this guy about x equals pi over 4. Now, what is your uh, what is your uh, Taylor expansion? F x zero, oops. F x zero plus derivative of f with respect to x calculated at x equals zero, then x minus x zero, right? That's your Taylor expansion. That's called first order approximation. Okay, first order approximation because we ignore all the second order term remember hot higher order term beginning second order so that's why if you just keep first order and ignoring second order and and the above beyond right so that's called first order approximation so now this guy, let me call this guy the delta. This guy delta x, right? Delta x equals x minus x zero. So what do you give here? What is your x from here? So this x zero goes to the right. So then x delta x plus x zero. That's your x. Then delta x is delta x zero is well. how much is x zero? Pi over four, right? That's what you got. So now, so, so you can replace by your x. You can replace your x by this guy in the Taylor expansion. Okay. So how about if you how do you replace your this guy then? How do you replace your dx over dt when you linearize it? So your x is what? Your x is delta x plus pi over five, five, four, right? So that's what I did, dx over dt. So derivative of d over dt is there. Then your x is, this x is replaced by delta x plus pi over four. Does it make sense? Okay, then how do you find the derivative of this guy? What, we, what is the derivative of x plus uh, two? It's like that, okay? So like this, so what, take the derivative of this guy, the derivative of this guy is zero, definitely. And you just have this guy here. That's what we have here. Similarly, how do you find the derivative of this guy again? You have to find the second derivative, right? So then you have to find the second derivative, meaning you have to take the derivative here again, d over dt again. So that means d squared over dx over dt squared. Because you need both of them, right? You need uh, dx squared, so the second derivative here, then you need this first derivative here. Then also you need sine x here, see that? Now you have to linearize the sine x also. How do you linearize it? Suppose your function is again, your function is sine x. So sine x equals sine x zero. This is your fx zero. Okay, that's what we have here. And then what is the next term there? Derivative of sine function with respect to x calculated at x equals f zero, which is pi over four. So what is that? Derivative of sine x calculated at x equals f zero. Then you have x minus f zero, right? For x minus f zero, we simply call delta x. Delta x. Then you simplify it. How do you simplify it? X, this is sine x zero, which is sine pi over four. Then what is the derivative of this guy? Cosine? Cosine x zero, x zero is pi over four. That's why cosine pi over four. Then delta x is there. Makes sense so far. Help me here. So far so good. Then plug in the value of this sine pi over four. What is the value of sine pi over four? One over square root of two. Then what is the value of this guy? Again, one over square root of two then you have delta x here as is. Now, finally, let me write all those things together. So you have this guy here, this guy here, which is this guy, right? 
So that's it. You got this. Then what is next? You have two. You have two. Then what is your dx over dt? dx over dt is this guy. Goes here. Then you have sine x. How do you linearize sine x? Your sine x is this guy, right? See? This is how you linearize sine x. So this is this. This is it. So one over one over square root of two is here. And I put this guy to the right because its right hand side is zero, right? Zero minus this guy, which is this guy. So far, so good. That's how you linearize everything here. So this equation can now be solved for delta x from which you obtain x equals this, okay? So because we started with this, we got this. Now, if you start with this, you get this. That's what I meant. Guys, nice question here so far. Did I lose you guys or is it still okay? So far, it's okay, sir. Very good. Now, so let's go to the real problem now. When I say, when I say real, real problem, so, so far I made your life easy because I give you your x zero, right? Now the thing is, when you have a real problem, you have to figure out this x zero also. That's what I meant by real problem, okay? Let's do that. So this is the last one, okay, guys? This is after this, I am done with this chapter. Finally, this is the 94th page of our slide, I think. All right. So let's read the question here. Find the transfer function VLS over VS. So let's look at this picture here. Uh, we have the voltage source here. This is connected to, what is this guy? Help me. What is this called? Inductor, right? Inductor has the value one, Henry. Then this guy connected to non-linear transistor uh, register. Your Ohm's law does not work anymore. Bad news. Non-linear register. Okay? So this is non-linear register. Then this is connected to 10 volt. And uh, yeah, this is the circuit we have. And so you are supposed to find VL, VL over VS, this guy, the, the, the transfer function. So you need to find VLS over VS. So obviously this guy does not have the, so the BR, if it were Ohm's law, it would be like this, right? IR. It would be like this for the Ohm's law. But this is nonlinear. That's why your BR is like this. And there is also extra unit here. This is the extra unit. What is this called? This BT is a small signal source. So there are four steps to linearize the problem. Okay, first step is find X naught. Remember in the previous problem, I gave you X zero, right? So here, it, I'm not, I haven't given you anything here. So this is the real world. So you have to figure out x0. How do you do that? Before you do that, first of all, you write your, this is the step number one, okay? I have four steps. Step number one, write the nonlinear differential equation. Help me here. So I go from here, right? Here to here, what do you have? You have Vt. Then from here to here, what is the voltage across the inductor? Are you happy? 
this guy here. Then what is the voltage across this guy? It's given, right? This is it. Or this is it. Then what are you left with? You have 10 volt here. So this is 10 volt. But now the thing is you have to choose the proper sign, right? That's the thing. So did I use the proper sign? Let's check. So when I go from here to here, I did go uphill. So plus, makes sense. When I go from here to here, I'll, get, I'll go downhill, minus, makes sense. When I go from here to here, I go downhill, minus, makes sense. Then when I go from here to here, I go uphill because this is negative, this is positive. See that, this is a longer one. So that's why I have plus 10 here. So far so good, right? Step one is done. Step one is write the nonlinear differential equation. This is nonlinear because you see, you have I squared term here. I times I, I squared, okay? Now, after I, after I am done with step one, your step two is find the steady state solution. What does that mean? So this means find your X zero. What is your X zero? So what is the rule in finding steady state solution? What is the, what are the, what is the rule? The rule is, So the rule is all the derivative set to zero, derivative set to zero, and also a small signal input set to zero. Do you have any small signal here? Help me figure out. Is there a small signal input here? See, this VT is a small signal source. So that's why this guy becomes zero and this guy becomes zero. That's the step two. Then what are you left with? What are you left with? You are left with this. Minus one plus two. Now I'll call that, see, remember I, I have to find X zero? In my case, I zero, right? So I call it I zero here. I zero, I zero plus 10 equals zero. Can I write this uh, 10 on the, on the other side? So this way, uh, one plus two I zero, I zero equals 10. This is what I did here. So then what is the value of your I? What is the value of I zero now? Can anybody help me here? How do you find the value of I zero? Please. Help me please. So this guy can be written as I zero plus two I zero squared minus 10 equals zero. Now you got the idea, right? 2i0 squared plus i0 minus 10 equals zero. How do you find the i0 here? Minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac divided by 2i say, remember? If you just, your b is here, what? Your b is one, right? See, this is b, b is one. And a is two, and your c is negative 10. If you plug in here, then you get two values of I zero. You get one, the positive, and the other one is negative. But you know that negative meaning your I is going this way. You are not convinced, right? Your I does not go from negative to positive, right? This is your negative, this is your positive. You are not convinced. Negative meaning this current is going this way. So that's why you're not convinced, you just toss that value. So then just take the positive value, which happens to be two amp. Guys, does it make sense so far? Guys, question. Question please.
Okay. Does it make sense so far? Your I0 is 2. Okay. You can use that formula and find I0, right? I assume that because that's a quadratic equation. Find I0 equals 2. You got another value, you get negative, something negative. Maybe, I don't know, 3. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Actually, you know what? I have done it here somewhere. So you get that value equals to uh, other one is negative 10 over 4. So two values, you get 2 and negative 10 over 4. So this negative value doesn't make sense. You just simply discard it, okay? So that's what you did. Now, the third step is the well-known linearization now. So how do you linearize your differential equation? What is your differential equation? Your differential equation is this, right? Bt minus L D I D T minus one plus two I I cos ten equals zero. That is your third third step. Okay. So how do you linearize this guy now? So you have to linearize this guy. So B T. So this is this is yeah this is you simply write bt here okay so you don't have to really so how do you linearize this guy l di over dt okay l is l right how do you linearize this di over dt so your i is what let i equals what i equals i zero plus delta i really how do you say that? Because remember in your in your uh, delta uh, in your Taylor expansion, f x zero plus d f over d x x calculated sorry slope calculated x zero then x minus x zero. Remember? So in this case, this x is i x zero is i zero. So I call i minus i zero equals delta x delta i. Okay, so that's why your i is, how do you get i from here? Your i is delta i plus i zero, that's what I did here. So I just, you know, did the Taylor thing. So if it, your, if it is i, then what is your di over dt? di over dt? Help me guys, please. So this is i zero is constant, right? We already know that, that's true, right? So don't worry about that. So that is two. Now, delta i, d over dt, derivative of delta i now. That's your di over dt. So let's uh, put this here. So d delta i over dt, this is how we linearize this guy. Okay. Now, next thing you have to linearize is what? The other function, right? So you have to linearize this function also. Oops, what did I do? DF, did I miss you? I miss somebody. LJ, oh, who left? Guys, are you guys with me or not really? I think Saeed got disconnected for a moment. He's back now. Oh, okay. So now next thing is this guy, right? I'll have to linearize this guy. I call this fx again, okay? My fx is, let me call it fi. fi is what? fi is one plus two i, i zero is my uh, fi, right? How do I linearize this guy? Again, use the, this Taylor function, right? So what is your the fi zero? That's the first one. Then what is the next one? df, over di, i equals zero, i zero. Then what is here? Delta i, can I simply write delta i here? So what is your fi? Fi zero. You know fi zero? Fi zero is 10. How do I know? Remember? You find one plus two i i equals 
you set it to negative 10, right? And from here, you got what? You got your I zero? Okay? You, or you can just simply put in, so you get 10 anyway. So two, two I, I. So what is this guy? One plus two times two times two, which is one plus five, one plus four times two equals five times two equals 10, see? Because we got it from there, so you should get that. But we checked, it did work. So fx0 is, uh, f fi0 is 10. Now how do you, how do you, what is this thing here? What is the derivative of this f here? So df over di is how much? Help me here. So d over di, what is your f? i plus two i square, right? What is with that, this guy? One plus four i calculated at two. So which is one plus four times two, which is nine, right? Does it make sense? So this is guy, this guy is nine. This guy is nine, this guy is nine here. Then delta i, delta i, okay? This guy is, when you linearize this, you get, uh, so you get uh, minus, help me, 10 minus nine delta i, plus 10 equals zero. This is how you linearize it. So from here, what do you get? So this 10 and 10 cancel out. They cancel each other. So what is your BT from here? Can you help me, what is your BT? L D delta I over DT plus nine delta I. Does it make sense? Step three is done. Linearize the differential equation. Now fourth step is take the Laplace transform of the linearized differential equation. Now this is your linearized differential equation. Take the transform, Laplace transform. What is the Laplace transform of B? Bs, right? Then uh, I simply call this L equals one, okay? So what is the Laplace transform of this guy? S times Delta I, S times delta I. So what is the Laplace transform of this guy? Nine delta I S, that's your Laplace transform. So, so what is, uh, can you guys uh, factor out delta S here, delta I here, delta I, delta I. So you got factor out, then yes, you got S plus nine, right? S plus nine is here, then you have BS. So what is your delta I over BS from here? Divide both sides by Bs, what do you get? You get delta I over Bs equals one over one S plus nine. Now you are just a step away now, okay? You're almost done. Now your goal is to figure out what? Your goal is to figure out Your goal is to figure out, if you remember, B L S over B S. That's your goal, right? Now, what did you find so far? You found this guy here. Now, only thing you need to do is you need to find the relationship between delta I and B L somehow. You have to do that, okay? So guys, any idea? How do you do that? So can you do this? Can you can I say BLT is L times DI over DT? Right? The voltage across the 
inductor is given by this. This is the well-known formula, right? We did this again many times already. So now, what is your I? So I is, remember in the Taylor series, what did you do? Your I is I zero plus delta I. That's your I, right? So what do you do here? D over DT, your I is, oops, I zero plus delta I. What is the derivative of uh, I zero? This is constant, zero, right? So then what do you do with the other guy? This is your BLT. Take the Laplace transform this guy. What is the Laplace transform? BLS equals, you can simply say L equals one, right? Why do I carry this all the time? So this one, what is the Laplace transform of this guy? S times delta I? That's the Laplace transform, right? Then what is the relationship between delta I and BL? So your delta I equals BL over S, right? So that's why I'm not excited. I'm excited because your delta I over B is known, which is one over S plus nine. Now I know the relationship between delta I and BL. So this is BL over S BS equals one over S plus, S plus nine. So how do you find your BL over BS? S times S plus nine. This concludes your chapter two. Guys, I'm ready to answer any questions you have. I can go back if you want. If not, I'll declare it as victory.